It's important to remember that I'm not just a guy who spent all day looking up a bunch of stuff online and wrote it into a script that I'm going to read for you now. This is a real tech news show. I swear. <laughs> yeah. Microsoft claims it is ending USB-C port confusion once and for all by making USB requirements like support for power delivery and DisplayPort Alt mode mandatory for laptop manufacturers under the Windows Hardware Compatibility Program or WHCP. Previously, these requirements were optional, which is why some laptop USB-C ports will fast charge your phone and cook you a chicken dinner while you're waiting and others will actively spit out your cable the sassiest ports. It sucks, but now Microsoft is translating pain into policy, which makes it sound like they purposefully caused suffering to use as raw material for the new good USB rules. Microsoft is making two firm promises. One, all USB peripherals, chargers, and displays will work exactly as advertised on any USB-C port on a WHCP certified device and other one, laptops that support 40 or 80 gigabit per second USB speeds will have full compatibility with USB 4 and Thunderbolt 3 peripherals on every port. Now, shopping for cables will still require sifting through a haystack of performance rating logos that look extremely similar, but going forward, every laptop USB-C port should just work, as long as laptop manufacturers Agree to it. I mean, come on, they're not Apple. NVIDIA and MediaTek's ARM-based laptop system on chip may launch in an Alienware gaming laptop sometime around the end of 2025 or early 2026, industry insiders reportedly told Taiwanese outlet United Daily News. This rumor was actually first shared last week by YouTuber Moore's Law is Dead, who flashed a supposed image of this SOC shared with him by one of his insiders. Where are my insiders? Andrew leaked something to me. The guest on that video, Wendell from Level 1 Techs, is sometimes hard to read, but I think he liked it. Now the leaked image seems to closely resemble NVIDIA's GB10 SOC, which powers their DGX Spark AI mini PCs, a product that led many to think the company was going to unveil a consumer-focused, all NVIDIA compact gaming PC at Computex. Uh, they didn't. <laughs> this PC is one that Windows Central notes would change gaming laptop design forever because you may have forgotten by now, this is reportedly an ARM-based gaming APU for laptops. While last year's Qualcomm Snapdragon X series Windows laptops were impressive in many ways, gaming was not exactly their strong suit. NVIDIA has a chance to prove that they can launch an efficient ARM CPU plus GPU combo with AI upscaling so you can play games on the go that look as lifelike as a Google VO3 video. A Radeon RX 9060 XT review has leaked, or at least some benchmark slides have leaked, after PC news site eTechnics seemed to prematurely publish their review. These slides were captured by Dragon Rider based Demon Targaryen on Reddit and beloved comedy filmmaker John Hughes on Twitter, showing the 9060 XT, the 16 gigabyte version, getting an average FPS just under the RTX 5060 Ti at 1440p and 1080p, although it's a big jump over the RX 7600 XT and 3D Mark's Time Spy benchmark, so you'll probably, the the, the 3D Mark heads love that. Depending on the real world price, this makes the 9060 XT look not too bad. Hopefully some gamers find the funds to pick one up because Valve just released their Steam hardware survey and the RX 9070 and 9070 XT are nowhere to be found. Despite AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su claiming that first week sales of the 9070 XT beat previous generations of Radeon cards by 10 times. Something's fishy here. NVIDIA also just reported record gaming revenue, saying it's up 42% year over year and 48% quarter over quarter, but it's possible that this gaming revenue is just coming from people buying gaming GPUs to use for AI, which NVIDIA obviously cares a lot more about now that gaming represents a paltry 8.5% of their total revenue. I mean, just look at this graph. Ah, I wish I could delete it just like how our sponsor does it. Delete me, your personal data deletion specialist, which is a useful thing to have since data brokers already have your info. 
unless you've avoided using the internet for the past couple decades, and this is the first video you've watched since 2004, I am honored. And also, I'm so sorry. This is how the internet is now. But I'm not sorry that Delete Me has family plans now, with easy to use, regularly scheduled personal data deletion requests, and detailed reports for the whole squad. Head on over to the video description and check out Delete Me today. Real shows have segments, and we have those, but they're just the same thing, but shorter, and they're called Quick Bits. Tens of thousands of dollars worth of Zotac RTX 5090s were apparently removed from their boxes and replaced with three backpacks before being sold. <laughs> this is like the three kids in a trench coat thing, but it's backpacks. And to make things worse, they were one-strap backpacks, which were kind of cool at one point, but not anymore. When a victim of this scam, Redditor JamesFerg650, told Micro Center, where he bought the GPU, about it, they found 31 more non-GPUs in their inventory, which appear to have been swapped back at their Zotac supplier. Micro Center gave James Ferg an actual 5090 and thankfully took the backpacks off his hands. Those should not be in the wild. Elon Musk announced that Twitter, which he keeps calling X for some reason, is continuing to morph into the everything app with the rollout of XChat, which will feature end-to-end -end encryption, quote, Bitcoin style, which is the only way I order my pizza. Burnt to a crisp. <laughs> There's just one problem, Bitcoin, uh, doesn't have encryption, as pointed out by a number of coin bros in Elon's replies. The CEO of Airbnb just said he wants to make an everything app, and I feel like he might have a better shot. You know, let's let him try. Apple has filed an appeal of the European Commission's ruling that found the company to be non-compliant with the EU's Digital Markets Act, particularly its interoperability requirements that require data like notification content to be shared with third-party devices. And Apple says they can't trust what those devices are gonna do with sensitive data like that. And although they've asked to talk to the EU about this, the EU has given them the cold shoulder. But you know, maybe we should hear Apple out here for a second because Ars Technica just did a deep dive on why the Apple TV is the most secure set-top box. And that's one of the only good options out there when the Nvidia Shields are starting to crumble into dust at this point. We need something. Ahead of everybody actually getting their meat mittens on a Switch 2, Nintendo has issued a warning not to peel off the protective film on the display which I think is very proactive. This has happened many times in the past, most notably with the first Samsung Galaxy Fold. Mark Gurman was one of the first to take one for the team and post his embarrassing story about peeling it off by accident, but that's okay because he became Germicus Maximus, the prime Germuloid, but it might not work out for you, so leave that thing on. And brain-computer interface company Paradromix has taken its competition with Neuralink to the next level by successfully installing its Conexus implant in a patient. Gotta be honest here though, they did put it in there and then take it back out 10 minutes later. It, it wasn't ready to fully commit, you know? It just wanted to try it on. Plus, if you leave it in there too long, the brain starts to taste bitter. This was a bad joke about tea. For more bad jokes, but also tech news, come back on Wednesday and watch another episode of the very real, very legitimate news program, TechLinked. It's on TV.